Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Alright folks, so the question is, what exactly is going on at CNN? Are they finally opening their eyes and swallowing the red pill? Kind of in a similar way that we've seen with Bill Maher? Or is the recent change in ownership at CNN a catalyst for telling the truth? I'm not exactly sure, but what I do know is over the last weeks, maybe last month or two, I've noticed a significant trend on CNN where we're actually seeing the truth a whole lot more. I know it sounds like Outlandish, it sounds crazy. And obviously, I'm not saying that CNN is all of a sudden a reputable source. All I'm saying is that there is a new ownership group that has been publicly critical of the network as it stands currently. And then all of a sudden, over the last couple of months, CNN, at least sometimes, actually makes sense. It's either an awakening moment and they're finally telling the truth, or new bosses and they have no choice but to finally tell the truth. And while, of course, telling the truth isn't always easy, let's just say their very leftist Twitter type audience is a very very, very angry at a most recent segment with Van Jones, who also happened to leave the panel speechless with one of his most recent takes. Let me show you guys what was said. But of course, before we get into any of it, please make sure to leave a like, a comment, subscribe, share the video as much as possible. And with that out of the way, let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so here's the very small segment from CNN that has lefties on Twitter furious. Van Jones stuns CNN hosts with some harsh truths about the state of the Democrat Party when it comes to people people who work in the liberal media, Van Jones is about as hard left as you can get. It even he sees the cracks that are forming in the current Democrat party. This week he had a moment on CNN that left two hosts with nothing to say in response. He explained how wokeness is alienating voters, and for once, he was right. Becoming a party of the very high and the very low. Uh, if you pull out the working class, you've got people who are very well educated and very well off. Those people talk funny. Latinx, I've never met a Latinx, I've never met a BIPOC, I've never met, you know, all this, this is weird stuff that these highly educated people say is bizarre. Nobody talks that way at the barber shop, the nail salon, uh, the, 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 uh, the grocery store, uh, the community center, but that's how we talk now. So that's weird. And then the people who are very low down on the economic ladder need a bunch of stuff. You wind up over promising, oh, we're going to give you reparations to, to people at the bottom of the economic ladder talking weird to appeal to people at the top, they cannot let her, and the work class walks away from you. That is the danger we're facing. And folks, this is what I've been saying is going to be the end of wokeness. All of this woke, out-of-touch garbage that 99.9% .9 of the population just doesn't subscribe to. I've said repeatedly that there are two specific things that will instantly end the era of wokeness. The first is money. The moment these major corporations see that their bottom line is hurting from all of the wokeness is the exact moment where woke shows are going to start getting cancelled and woke staff, woke employees are going to be out of a job real quick. And of course, the second thing is the moment Democrats start to seriously lose elections or get in a position where they're poised to lose, well, the progressive woke base is going to be the first people that they throw to the side. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. I've said this forever on my channel, and really, I'm not the only one. It doesn't make me special. But I've said for a very long time that as the American population faces some real dilemma, whether it's the board, high crime, gas prices, inflation, the economy, potential foreign wars and domestic threats, you know, real issues that actually matter to the American people. What are the Democrats focused on? They're focused on all of this culture war nonsense and identity politics. They're focused on making bills more inclusive, changing the names of elementary schools, promoting drag story hour to like kindergarten kids. Even a mainstream Democrat from Michigan said recently that there should be one drag queen for every school. And they're focused on these ridiculous woke terms like BIPOC and Latin X. Van Jones is right. When have you ever met a Latin X? person in real life. Never, because they don't exist. They don't exist off of TikTok. That's the reality. And it's just so funny to have this realization in mid-2022. This is something that was clearly cringe in 2014, clearly wasn't going to age well, and now all of a sudden, Democrats and Democrat media analysts are waking up and realizing that this woke academic pseudo-intellectual nonsense is hurting them. And how ironic it is that Democrat academics created this stuff to be more appealing to my minority groups and minority voters. And the culmination in the end has been, well, they're losing minority voters. You may be witnessing a seismic shift among Hispanic voters in South Texas. The Mexican-born wife of a Border Patrol agent and daughter of migrant workers, Myra Flores, defeated Democrat Dan Sanchez by nearly eight points you see here. Now, it was a special election, which means the seat is up again in November. But dig into the numbers of this race in this 34th district, which is a Democratic stronghold.
hold for a long time. Biden carried that district by four points. But in Cameron County, the largest county in that district, Biden won that by 13 points. And yet she carried that too. Yeah, not exactly working. I mean, the meme comes to life. Of course, this particular meme right over here. These leftoids have been warned for a very long time. The writing's been on the wall. We've warned them many times through meme warfare. But of course, typical Democrat fashion, they have to learn the hard way. Well, that implies that you have the ability to learn. It seems as though a lot of them would rather double down and sink their heels in. And like I stated in the intro, leftists on Twitter are not happy with Mr. Van Jones. How dare you say the truth, Van Jones? Brooklyn Dad Defiant writes on Twitter, Van Jones is not our friend. This Twitter user with hashtag Democrat Patriot and blue wave signs in their Twitter handle writes, Van Jones is an idiot. The white supremacists can have him. Any black person that turns against the Democrat Party and joins the GOP does not have a problem with being a victim of racism and hate. And if you love yourself, you wouldn't be a Republican. Am I wrong? Prove it. This individual writes, Do remember that Van Jones is a grifter who worked hand in hand with criminal slumlord Jared Kushner and has always been seen in GOP circles, including taking photos with Hitler apologist Candace Owens. He's not a Democrat strategist, he's a paid sellout. Imagine watching that interaction with Ted Lieu and Candace Owens and actually being convinced that Candace Owens is a Hitler apologist, completely out of their minds. But this is just what happens when lefties are subjected to reality. I mean, imagine being in denial that BIPOC and Latin X are cringy pseudo-intellectual academic terms that most people don't support. I mean, look at the polling data. It's something like 90 plus percent of Latinos don't identify as Latin X. There's been an ongoing campaign for years now to mainstream some of these terms and it's just not working because people just want to be people. People want to be American citizens. They don't want to be part of these weird self-victimization groups and craft their entire identity around these labels and political identities. People just want to be human beings with families and kids and wives, husbands. They want to buy a home and live a decent life. They don't want to be BIPOC Latinxes playing into the grievance politics narrative and making that their identity. It's cringe and most importantly, it's a waste of effort. It doesn't solve problems. Saying you're Latin X or subscribing to any grievance politics culture war or nonsense doesn't solve societal issues. And that's why it's such a joke to call these people intellectuals, academics. They're not. Smart people don't get distracted by labels and nonsense ideas that don't help anybody. Smart people can see through the BS. You know which people are smart? You know, let me ask you the question. The college and university graduates with either a bachelor's or in many cases master's and PhDs with their social studies degrees coming up with these ridiculous terms and labels or the regular American who looks at that stuff and says, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. Newsflash, it's not the person with $100,000 in student loan debt with a useless degree. It's the regular American citizen. Lefties are their own worst enemies and they're losing the culture war. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.